And now there's the big marine collection. There's a lot there. There's Randy's wife, uh, Deb, who is doing a lot of the data entry. And uh, there's a lot here. This is what Randy is actively doing. And uh, I don't have a lot of slides on that. Somewhere in the process, we usually give a talk here and there, but Fly got refurbished a few several years ago. Bob Skinner and Vic Porter and I uh, took it out and sort of the landing up there and cleaned all the, the grime and a lot of the grease off the skeleton and rewired the parts that came off and uh, kind of got him back to refurbish a little bit. It took uh, two or three days, but I think it, uh, it was needed. Fly. That was his fly, yeah. We just took him out of the museum. The museum room was on the door to the left. No, it's on the, it'd be on the right, but anyway. Uh, yeah, we just took it out in the landing up here and did that. And collection storage, this is probably 1996 or something like that, but it's been upgraded considerably to environmentally controlled space, secure space, to this. And heaven knows in the lower right what I was thinking, working in that big jar of snakes, but um, my, one of my earliest attempts at Photoshop. Uh, but... Uh, uh, and so I've got a little bit of a, of a walk through. Of, uh, let's see the clicks. It's probably, I think the last video clip. That'll just show you sort of how they're stored today and how it's so much different because you've got the right environmental control protection and all this. And it's just a. Um, and we know the contents of the boxes and the ones that need work. We know where they are. The ones that are all numbered and cataloged, and all that. Uh, we know where they are. Uh, a lot of we use a lot of Ziploc bags oh. and things that are need protection. They they're okay. in plastic boxes huh. and other things that and uh, alligator scars, you know, and an eagle and yes, it does. Okay. And so we've got several of the type specimens, and that's on the left. Well, on the right is just a photo that, that the uh, Smithsonian took when they borrowed these years ago, actually in probably the 70s, uh, when they were studying them to document them. And so, but it, that's one of the types. There's another, and again, the species was named after these, these uh, basically squids, coiled squids. Uh, brachiopod, it's a little shell on the left, photo on the lower right. And on the right, you can see all these little, these little wire-like things. These are little shells that uh, live in the ocean, and they have these long, wiry sp uh, spicules that help anchor them in the bottom. And if you get a well-preserved specimen, you have those. But they don't look like anything unusual, you see. But yet, this is what the species is named after them. So you have to have the actual plates in front of you to recognize them. Because if you didn't know what the original type looked like, you'd say that's not a, really a great specimen. So it's, it's very difficult. Because of that, we don't throw anything out ever until we understand. And I will show you. Uh, Samson, big collector, a collector, you know, in New Harmony. Uh, a lot of his collection came here. He, I mean, you can see correspondence from E.T. Cox, 1872, when he was state geologist up in Indianapolis. And... Uh, talking about specimens and identifying back and forth. So there's a, the collection here is composed of, from a lot of different people. And I like that letter <laughs> there, too. Uh, uh, apparently, we got things from Dickerson in Illinois. Uh, and, and there's other collectors that, uh, like Lanshaw Yates collection. Yates has done, a, has, we have a lot of things from the marine collection, all the uh, uh, the modern seashells and things like that. We have uh, fossils, rocks, minerals, land shells. Uh, so there's a Yates component in the collection. There's a Samson component. There's a Cox component. Uh, and a Caldwell component. He got involved, I think, with Native American things. But you can see they often wrote their labels for specimens on the back of their, of their calling cards. So apparently he ran for mayor once. Uh, <laughs> Yes. Uh, 
Uh, my wife did some work at Berkeley and we found the original Yates catalog and she's been able to get a PDF copy and she's sending it to Margaret. We have two of them downstairs. The numbers on the Yates catalog from Berkeley match the numbers on the specimens of Yates we have here. So that means we'll have identifications in some of these things that, because it's, no, that's good. I mean, that's an important fact. It's just because uh, so much documentation has been lost and it's a detective thing to, to bring it back in. And it's not easy. Um, so here's sort of the project phases. Everything gets removed from the attic and cleaned, done. Everything gets a catalog number, almost. Everything gets identified in process. Specimens get assessed for scientific, historical, or a series value. Scientific specimens, you want to have series to see the range of variation. If they're a good example, they're display specimens. If they have a value for educational, or if they just don't have a lot of value. At that point, we make recommendations to the trustees to see what they want to do. And if they want to, uh, things that don't, uh, they, they don't have good physical integrity, it's just nothing good, maybe you don't want to have good museum space storing those, and they give them to an educational institution or something. But that's the trustee thing. We're not there yet. We also want the museum to receive, uh, the collection to have the best practice archival storage. Right now we're doing pretty darn good. I mean, it, it couldn't be much better. And the collection, you, we want to get it scientifically documented and have all the appropriate items integrated into the interpretive plan. We, we exhibits, programs, online, and all that. So you have access to that. So this is sort of the big phase. and. It takes a long time because sometimes we forget what we did the year before. Not really, I make a lot of notes, but uh, it's, it's hard to keep this, this thing moving sometimes. But uh, what kind of questions do you have? It's a, it's a monumental project. We've been forever. There is an end, but we're not there yet. I can't believe yeah, there's an end to that. But and, what about that IU, uh, when you first uh -huh. mentioned, you know, there was a yes. sent to IU, the Owen you know, that was I, yeah, there. yeah. I don't know much about the own collection, yeah. but that wasn't from here. But yeah. but it's, some of that went to IU, and then some of it then went to to the Smithsonian, I think. Yeah. So it's moved a little bit. But, the, but a lot of them were destroyed. I think. They could have been. Yeah. yeah. Well, Tom, the, you know. Another geologist with Patton Rex Road and um, Horowitz was that Gary Lane. Gary Lane, yes, Gary Lane, and he's like the crinoid expert, a great professor, wrote textbooks. A great guy, and, and all these guys help at the State Museum. We, every one of them helped us a little bit. Yeah, but everybody liked John Patton, everybody liked Gary Lane. No, you know, Horowitz is a great guy, but he's quiet. He, sits, he's, he could speak Russian, he could read Russian, he could do English, he could do all this stuff. He'd come back and say, hey, I saw 10 dinosaurs today. Of course, he knew the dinosaurs and birds are related. I said, wow. So, uh, I mean, and, and Tom knows all these guys personally for many, many years, so I mean, he could speak much more to them, but but they got this whole thing moving, and uh, we're lucky enough to uh, do the right things to try to keep momentum and and the thing is to get is to get this thing done. But it just doesn't move fast. So so that's sort of the, where we are. It's just a progress report. It's alive and active. We get two weeks every year, and uh, we keep moving. We have to stay healthy and uh, keep moving. And everybody's very accommodating down here. We appreciate that. They, uh, they give us great support, uh, hope with the lodging, uh, you know, the friends group do, and, uh, and it's uh, very good. And they have been for many years when Nancy is here, Rosemary is here. I mean, this is, they know this thing is, is keep going on for, forever. Well, okay, very good. Thank you.